What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update. A few bits and pieces to get through in terms of transfer news, contract news and, and the like. So let's get straight into it and let's start off with Adama Traore. As Bruno Lager has been speaking in his press conference today and he says uh, he expects Tottenham target Adama Traore to stay at the club this <laughs> month. Uh, but, however, he did follow on from that and says that uh, this is football and things can change very quickly. Yeah, he's probably just saying the party line. I'd like to think he's saying the party line. Otherwise, we really have got to let another one get away from us, which would be in really a, annoying if that's the case. Because this seems like a deal that both parties are pretty happy to be done. So if we can't get this, get this one over the line, then uh, that would be very, very frustrating. But... Um, Obviously, when that when he says something like that, it's obviously going to set the whole fan base <laughs> on fire, <laughs> as it does. Um, but um, what do you think Brian Dague was doing? Right oh god, I don't even <laughs> want to know. But um, you should probably hide it from him. You probably shouldn't should show him this video. Uh, but hopefully, he's just turning the party line. And look, you've seen it before, where a manager or something says something in a press conference, and a few days later, the transfer happens. So. I wouldn't read too much into it, but it's a bit annoying that, you know, we should be at the, like, Adama's left out of the squad stage by now. And we, we're should not... be, we, should be, we should be Adama's in the predicted lineup stage by now. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we're not there yet, so. Yeah, it's very frustrating. It is frustrating when you hear these kind of things, but let's hope we can get the deal over the line. But at the end, I'm not holding my breath, to be honest, but let's move on. Uh, Dylan Markande, uh, Dan Kilpatrick says, Blackburn and Tottenham are close to agreeing a permanent deal for Markande for around 500,000 up front. Could rise to a million with add-ons um, and and includes a significant sell-on clause as well. Sky Sports followed on from that saying Blackburn are close to agreeing a deal. Uh, Spurs had offered the uh, Dylan Markande a new contract, but he wants to play regular first-team football. Uh, which is, you know, fairly annoying because another good product coming through the Youth Academy, which we're letting go, but... He wants to play first in football at the end of the day. Understandable. He's 20 years of age now. He's, not, he's, mm. he's young, but he's not like a teenager. So at that kind of age, you want to start getting some opportunities. Some players are um, desperate at that age to... Uh, uh, you know, they believe they're ready to start playing first team minutes. Obviously, Harry Kane, we all know, like he never never broke into the Tottenham team until he was 21, but he got had a series of loan moves before then. Markande, you know, he's at 20. I would imagine uh, in the PL2, he's like probably one of the older ones, isn't he? Yeah. So uh, he's probably looking around thinking he's bagging goals left, right and centre. It's too easy for him. He needs to test himself. And unfortunately for him, he hasn't had too many opportunities for Tottenham in the first team. And when he has done, hasn't looked ready. So maybe it's just an, uh, a case for him of getting going to a new club and uh, playing regularly week in, week out, and then really do properly developing. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him sign a new contract and go out on loan, um, maybe to a Blackburn or a championship side to see how he gets on. But is what it is. The guy doesn't want to sign a contract. Uh, so, unfortunately, we're going to have to lose him. And hopefully we risk him the best in his career because, you know, Tottenham boy through and through. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. But at least we've got a significant um, sell-on fee, but no buyback clause there. Yeah. And there's no need for Blackburn to agree to find things. He's only got six months left. Exactly. So. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about that old Paolo Dybala once again. Tusto Sports saying that Tottenham are one of the three clubs who are very tempted by the idea of Dybala as a free agent in the summer. Correa de la Serra saying manager Antonio Conte really likes Dybala and is ready uh, to make a move to sign him as a free agent with his new contract uh, with Juventus in big doubts. Yeah, that's the, a lot of reports saying he's not going to sign one. And if he is going to be available on a free in the summer, then definitely we should be looking at that. Um, obviously, Paratici knows him well. So maybe that's something that, that they can look at. I actually don't think it's as ridiculous as people might think it is, although... People are only saying it's ridiculous because of what happened last time. Yeah, I mean, the wages might be an issue and all that. But um, he actually hasn't had that great of a season. So stock isn't so high at the moment in that aspect. Mm. So... He actually might be quite gettable right now. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm just checking up his wages to see what he is on. Um, he's on... One second. The only problem is because he's on a free, he's going to demand probably double what he's done now. Yeah, he's on he's on 222 grand a week. So you can probably pay that, but he, will probably, he probably wants more, doesn't he? Yeah. So the, the question is whether... Uh, Tottenham can pay the wages he'll be demanding. I don't think, I think in terms of Dybala wanting to come to Tottenham and stuff like that, I reckon there could be a deal done because I don't think anyone's going to be like 
desperate as, as desperate as us to get him in. Like bigger clubs might be looking at other players rather than Dybala, even though he's on a free. Um, but financially, whether it works for us and whether we don't get gazumped by another club is remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, in terms of his output this season, uh, played 15 games so far this season, scored six goals in, in the league, which is already a better return than he had last season. So, well, didn't he get a player of the year a lot? Was that year before? Year before. Ah, uh, so, yeah. So, last year he didn't have a great yeah, year. Last year he scored four goals in 20 games. Yeah, he must have been injured a lot. And um, this season... Uh, six and 15 is okay it's not terrible but yeah, it's not it's, amazing it's, in total he scored 9 and 20 that's, that's decent so uh, obviously I'd love him I'd definitely want him through the door um, and I, I think it's possible but uh, first of all we probably, we probably need to be champ in Champions League and we need to pay a lot more wages so yeah. it's probably unlikely I would say but I would say if we had a bit of ambition it wouldn't be impossible yeah I mean Allegri's already come out and said um, of his ambitions to keep him um, and that the, the contract situation is with the club. So, look, we'll see how this one plays out. But again, not holding my breath, to be honest. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Jack Pitbrook has been talking, and he says Everton were considering possibly coming in for Deli Alley towards the end of the month. However, they are yet to make a move for the Tottenham Hotspur midfielder. Do you think this is a viable one? Well, they let go of Hamad Rodriguez, didn't they? So they have a bit of a hole in their squad in terms of like a midfielder who maybe can um, pinch with a few goals. Obviously, Delhi's been out of form for so long. Um, I think it's one on a loan deal, probably. I, mean, I don't think they'll be signing him. But on a loan deal, I reckon this could be a goer because Everton are struggling badly for quality in the forward areas. They've got Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison, but not too many others apart from them. Obviously, Townsend and Gray have been like stepping up a bit, but they, you know... They, they can't be relied on them consistently. So can you rely on Delhi? <laughs> no, you can't. But they, it's better to take a punt on Delhi than to not have anyone. So yeah. obviously, they just got money in for De Luca Dean as well. Yeah, and that probably helped. I mean, there was that report, wasn't there, that they didn't have any money to spend because of the FFP and bringing in money from um, Dean will give them a bit of leeway, I guess. Yeah, for, I think a loan deal is definitely viable. I can see a loan deal happen. I can see um, Spurs agreeing to a loan deal if one uh, come, maybe with an obligation to buy mm. if um, if anything can happen. Even an option to buy. <laughs> Sorry, option. I meant option to buy. Not. I don't think I agree to an obligation. Yeah. Option to buy. All yeah, right. I think that's possible, yeah. Let's move on. Ali Gold has been talking about that Hugo Lloris contract once again. And he says talks over Hugo Lloris' new contract is expected to be finalised very soon with the ke keeper keen to stay and what are believed to be modest demands um, from him deemed more than reasonable by the club. What do you reckon modest yeah. demands mean? Well, he's on 120 grand, so either, was it level pay with Kane maybe, do you reckon? Or do you reckon he goes all the way up to 200? Could do. He's captain. I can't see that. Yeah, you've got to remember, it's, it could be his last big payday. It's true, but, you know, first of all, there's no other club, um, no other club's going to put him on those kind of wages. Uh, so if he no. leaves us, he's not getting anywhere near that. And he, if he's only on 120, I can only see him getting around 150 max. At that age, I don't think we're putting him on 200 grand a week if, if he hasn't reached It's a negotiation, heights. isn't it? Yeah, his negotiation. Could ask for two hundred. He could ask, <laughs> but he's saying modest demand. So yeah, I what about one fifty? Makes makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So look, just get it done already. How long do we have to spit, like sit here talking? Like, yeah, yeah, it's going to get done. It's going to. They're get probably done. maybe they're arguing because maybe Laurie's wants a two year deal, and maybe they're only yeah, giving that, one that's year. Yeah, that's what the rumors were a few weeks ago. So just give, give him a two year yeah, deal. Yeah, I don't understand. You know give him an extra year if he if, if he really is is only good enough for another year, then sell him. You could probably get a bit of money for him after a yeah. year. Just sign him up, man. Two years is, is is what we want, to be honest. Teams in France would probably, even if, say, he had a bad year next year, I reckon it's like Nice or Ren or whatever, whoever was, who was it, Lille or whatever, they would buy him for cheap. Mm, definitely. He'll have loads of takers, let's be honest. Mm. It's Hugo Lloris. Uh, but let's move on. The last uh, story of the uh, video is about Steven Bergwijn from Fabrizio Romano. And David Neres is joining Shakhtar the next. That is done, confirmed. Here we go. Um, and he says Ajax's main target still remains Steven Bergvine, which is a weird one because, you know, Conte keeps talking him up, uh, keeps saying that, um, you know, he's needed. And obviously he is very much needed in the squad with our depleted front line. We can't let him go unless we bring someone in. And I don't want that guy to be Adama Traore. And apart from him, there's no talks about anyone else. Yeah, if it's the problem is this whole this whole deal merry-go-round sinks of Adama being the Bergvine replacement because it all yeah. makes sense. Exactly. Neres for Neres goes out, Bergvine comes in, Bergvine um, goes out, and Adama comes in, and that's what we're waiting for for all this to get kicked off. We're waiting to 
sell Bergvan. Although we heard reports that we're not willing to sell Bergvan until we get a replacement in. So maybe we're waiting to sign Adama to sell Bergvan. I don't know. But um, it sounds to me it's obvious that Adama is a replacement for Bergvan. So annoying, man. It's so annoying. Which it shouldn't be. It has to be Adama plus one if we're selling Bergvan. If we, look, if we're keeping Bergvan, we still need plus one. But I can kind of stomach Adama and keep Bergvan. But if we're selling Bergvan, we need another one on top of that. Probably another two. But now I'll have to settle for another one because I can't see us getting another two. Agreed. But if, you know, you're talking about... He keeps talking about Steven Bergwijn as one of the guys he relies on. Yeah. If it relies on him Striker. so much, keep him until the end of the season and sell him in the summer if we're going to sell him. You know what I mean? Because we're just so short on options. Yeah. If, we're, if we sell Bergwijn and replace him with the Dharma and don't get anyone else in, we're going to be very short going into the rest of the season. Really short. But I feel like we're selling him because he's the only one we're getting offers for, not because we really want to sell him. Yeah. That's why, that's why. And then we need money to make new signings and all of the whole fan base is desperate for new signings. So I, they just need to start spending some money instead of relying on player sales. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that is your Tottenham update today. I want to know your opinions on all the new stories we have brought you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.